We are ready, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you everybody for tuning in, for joining. Hello everybody to this very special hour. Um, it's my great delight to welcome you all from wherever you're joining us. I'd say hello to New York, to London, to Berlin, of course, but also to Beirut. Hello, dear world. Thanks for joining us and for tuning in today. Yes, it is a very special photo show that we're getting to know today. It's called Inside Shatila, where young professionals will show us their world. And I can tell you, it is a different world that you normally see and scroll through your timelines. So stay tuned and take the best out of it. We have guests, of course, from Beirut today, and I quickly like to introduce you to them. I'd start with um, Maike Ziervogel, who is with us today. She is from the Alsama Project, an educational charity working in refugee camps in Lebanon, offering secondary education for Syrian refugees that have been out of schools all their lives or most of their lives before. Dear Maike, thanks for joining us today and greetings to Beirut. Thank you. I'm very happy to be joining you today. Great. We'll get to know your work better in a second. Sarah is also with us. Sarah Hitait. She is from Our Voice and she's also a media trainer for smartphone journalism. Also, a big welcome to you and great for joining us. Thanks for joining us today. Dear Sarah. Hello. Hello, Kay. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you. Also with us today from the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, uh, he, the director of the office in Beirut, Christoph Klemann is with us. Also, a warm welcome to you, dear Christoph, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Katie. I'm looking forward to this. Very excited. And of course, we do have our photojournalists that we look into to see what they were doing. Aisha Omi, an Our Voice photojournalist, and Mahmoud Sleiman, also an Our Voice photojournalist, is with us. To the both of you, a warm welcome goes also to you, also based, of course, in Beirut. We can't wait to see more of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, I'd like to introduce you to Eroy Gurian, um, a dear friend of mine and also the Our Voice founder and photojournalist. Dear Eroy, thank you so much for organizing everything. It's so nice to see you, hopefully soon again in person, but now digitally. Thank you, Katie, and thank you for hosting this event. It makes it so much more uh, beautiful and professional to have someone like you on board. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to what we have to discover today. I didn't hesitate a second when you asked me. It's my great pleasure to be part of the Our Voice family. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to post your questions in the YouTube uh, channel and the YouTube live stream. We will collect the questions and then we will dive into all the questions later on. But Mike, I'd like to start with you uh, as we were talking and diving in now into a little bit of the context. The photo exhibition is called Inside Shatila. For some of, for some of us, it's just a name, you know, but for some of, a lot of people, of course, it's home. Maybe you can give us a little bit of context. What does Shatila mean? Where is it based? Who are the people that are living in Shatila? And of course, your uh, organization is called um, or translated into sky, which also can be translated into horizon. So in this context of the Shatila camp, but also in the context of your project work, how do you help to, you know, to gain a, a broader horizon in this context? Okay, so perhaps I should just quickly explain. So Shatila is uh, one, I think of nine, uh, Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon. Uh, it was set up in 1947 uh, for originally 3,000 Palestinian refugees. It now houses, following the Syrian uh, war, uh, anything, their estimates, between 20 to 40,000 people. And it's in the middle of Beirut. It's one square kilometer. You have now Palestinians living here in third generation as refugees in addition to, of course, thousands and thousands of Syrians. And uh, we operate uh, within these uh, refugee camps. So uh, we have an education institute here in Shatila and also in the neighboring camp, uh, Borsh Berezhne, where we uh, give education to Syrian teenagers uh, between from 12 years to 24, 25 year olds. We bring them up to Breve level, which is the sort of O-level equivalent uh, in the uh, Lebanese system. 
And at the same time, we also empower them in order to eventually run the institutes and the schools themselves. And uh, Mahmoud and Aisha will talk about that a bit more in a moment. Just a quick uh, question, a secondary question. Um, when you talk about the biggest challenges right now inside in Chatila, what would you say? What is currently a big obstacle? Electricity and Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> to start with, um, I mean, you know, so so as you know, this, uh, the uh, situation, of course, in Lebanon is disastrous. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's not just COVID, uh, but it's it's also um, hyperinflation and economic meltdown uh, following the the explosion last year of of the harbor in 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 Beirut. Um, the situation in, 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 the, in, in the camps, like everywhere else in, in Lebanon, has of course got much worse. But having said that, um, most uh, inhabitants, of course, or all inhabitants of the camp are already the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, so in some ways, they are, um, the, the situation here has, you know, when you're at the bottom, it's very difficult to go even further down. So in comparison to uh, a lot of uh, Lebanese, especially middle class Lebanese or lower middle class Lebanese, who have really lost everything. Um, the refugees living in, in the camps here who have had nothing uh, have also therefore lost nothing. But of course, life has become even harder. I mean, we have hyperinflation here, which of course means that people are really struggling uh, to, to feed themselves. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for explaining a little bit more the context. Sarah, I'd like to dive in with you again, of course, also in the context. Mike attached to already a few of the biggest problems right now, electricity, Wi-Fi, of course, the COVID situation, then the, expl um, the expl explosion last year and the hyperinflation right now, currently, of course, um, stuff, you know, being the problem or the, the point of suffering for so many people. How do you actually keep projects going in such a very volatile environment and of course how do people and projects in that context survive you are project manager for the Deutsche Welle Academy but of course also a specialist in project work in the media development what do you see what helps but also what what didn't help in the past uh, actually let's start with what helps um, let's say like we have training for five six days for me having training for this short period of time will give that chance for people to be in different situations with different trainers, with different contexts. So we, mo we were more focused on the content, on new skills, on giving them new horizon and how to tell stories, how to produce stories. And this will give them more motivation. Like maybe it's not very big motivation, but at least at least something that they can move on with and find something they are really interested in and maybe they can uh, discover something and develop their own skills. So this is one point. The second point is to uh, be more flexible as a trainer during this tough day. So I'm not tough anymore. So it's fine if they can join the Zoom meeting for one day because there is no internet or maybe there are not... Um, and in good mood, like let's say they are traumatized or maybe today they are really sad, so it's fine. I'm more flexible with them. And uh, this will, will build more connection between a trainer and also participants. So this is, I think this is my main, um, my main thing that I'm, I'm, I'm discovering or I'm figuring out during this tough days uh, in Lebanon. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, just a backup question as well. Um, do you do more now digitally in your workshops or do you rather prefer, of course, being in person? But of course, it might be difficult because of the COVID situation. So how do you handle that situation, you know, being still in this pandemic time, but also, of course, craving for personal social connection? Um, actually, now it's, uh, let's say it's half-half. I have also make digital online training and also personal and physical training, but of course, uh, nothing will be the in-person training as our voice training. So it was in person, Eric came to Lebanon and, and we delivered the training in the ground. And it was really interesting because the last year, uh, PVC or PVCs was, was hybrid training and uh, 
it's totally different than than this year with them. So maybe Ero also can share more about this inside uh, inside um, situation during our training. But um, of course, I prefer uh, physical one to one or 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 being in front of our of my students and having this interaction and and connection and give them also more um, more uh, information and also they will give me more uh, input uh, based on their own experience and circumstances. Thank you, Sarah. Ero, let's go behind the scenes of our war. Sarah was touching upon that point, so I'd like to dive in with you into that. Ero, uh, when we talk about our voice, how did it start? I mean, you are based in Munich and this project runs in Beirut. What is the connection? What is your connection? And, you know, give us a little bit of the glimpse how it all started with the little seat of our voice. It's the kind of story you like, Katie, because it's personal. Should I go continue? I love personal stories always coming from the heart. <laughs> This is the story. I started the first time I traveled to, to Lebanon in my whole life. This was in 2014. I was working on a large project on the Armenian diaspora. I'm half Armenian and I worked on a project on Armenians living in Beirut. There's a quite a sizable uh, Armenian community. And, and at that point, to be very honest with you, I didn't have uh, you know, I didn't see the situation of the, the refugees in the country, but of course, being there in 2014, and you remember that was the, the, the start of the big uh, uh, flow of uh, people fleeing their country in, in Syria, you couldn't, you know, you, you couldn't help but, but realize there was something um, going on. And so I was, I was directed to the Bika Valley. Um, there was an NGO that does some excellent work in the Bika Valley. The Bika Valley is the, in the middle of Lebanon and it's basically the, the corn chamber of the country where a lot of um, produce is, is produced. And a lot of uh, Syrian uh, migrants um, are based there and uh, an organization called Beyond Association invited myself and a fellow uh, colleague of mine to come and to witness what they're doing. And this was my first, uh, really my first experience uh, uh, making contact and 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 in finding out about the situation of the of the uh, Syrian refugees, and when one day we discovered in a, a school, a tent school, that there was the press club, uh, which was a little group of people who uh, young people, teenagers, who with a Syrian teacher. Um, his, his name is Meziad, we're very close friends. He's watching, I hope, right now from, from Bika. Uh, we, we, uh, you know, I, it became clear that there's something that I could contribute. I'm, I'm, I'm not a, an NGO. I don't have uh, tons of money to, or food to give, but what I can give is um, a little bit of media, uh, media uh, literacy or visual literacy, as we call it. And we started um, this project. And so it, and it grew from that point um, until today, uh, until we found the Friedrich Naumann Foundation who, who supported us and are still supporting us, until we found Alsama who, who um, are playing a vital role in what you will see tonight. And so it developed from that point. And, and you know, I mean, a place like Lebanon, once once you go there, uh, you you have to come back. It's 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 addictive. You're hooked. I see that. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Eros. So I understand that, of course, you can bring in your experience from media literacy, but you also bring in your time and your passion for visual storytelling and for telling stories via the smartphone. So maybe you can give us a glimpse. What are these workshops all about? Is it just you know learning? how to produce stories and how to produce reports? Or is it more about telling stories in a visual, in a new, in an honest, in a raw way that comes from their uh, you know, environment, from their narrative, rather than having ideas um, and ex you know, explaining ideas that are scribbled somewhere else, but rather exploring own ideas in, in their own context. Maybe you can give us a glimpse how these workshops where the photo stories came out in the end looks like. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that, that's a that's a good one, Katie. And and maybe I can ask our producer Dominic to to show uh, the first image that we prepared, and you will get a, a glimpse of the workshop that Sarah and myself did at Alsama this summer in July. And uh, let's see if we can uh, see a photo now, Dominic. Maybe we can see the first image that we have in the presentation. Should be coming up. I think in it's in a live stream already, um, but it's not visible to us because we're. Ah, in yes, 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 yes. the case. <laughs> So, so this is, you, you can see Sarah now, we are in a classroom of Alsama project in the middle of, of uh, Shatila in Beirut. Uh, we were there in July. Uh, it was very, very hot. Let me tell you, it was very hot. And with the, there, there's no reliable electric power there. So uh, we were sweating, we were sweating, but we kept going strong. And what you can see here is we're doing, we're preparing the workshop. This was the day one or day two. Um, we're giving our students a little bit of theoretical background about visual storytelling. We're, uh, we're telling them uh, what it takes to take pictures that tell a story. Um, what it is what it's like to hold the camera not vertically but horizontally because you can tell more of a story and all those things we discuss by giving them a little bit of theoretical background dominic can i have the next photo please and so um, what you see is the next image is again, uh, it's in at Alsama at the center at the education center, which is a beautiful small place, but, uh, but it, you know, it, it was, uh, they provided us with everything we, we needed a space to teach uh, the, the young people and to, to, uh, we had a monitor and we had a, our laptops there. And here we can see one of our participants um, as we develop ideas for stories. So you were asking, what are the people, what are the, the, the young people supposed to shoot with their cameras? And we're encouraging them to discover their neighborhood, to discover their surroundings with the cameras, with the smartphones. And so we were talking about the ideas, you know, about the idea of uh, maybe I can go visit this car mechanic. Maybe I can go visit uh, a person who's selling food around the corner. Maybe I can, I know this person who is playing cricket and, and so on and so forth. And we developed those ideas. Dominic, can we see the next image, please? So that's, that's the theoretical uh, side of the story. And then if, of course, after that, um, uh, we went out um, or the, 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 the youth, they went out uh, into Shatila to discover uh, their neighborhood. For, for most of them, it was the first time that they had the smartphone with them to discover a neighborhood. Um, maybe we can see the next one, please. Yeah, this is still in the, in the classroom, explaining some concepts of perspective, explaining uh, the visual narrative, how to, to tell a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and so on. But that's the theoretical part. Where, it's, where, it, where it gets really interesting is when they're going out, and I think we can see that in a second, um, uh, still practicing. We're in, in the, pra in the uh, classroom practicing. There are three of them. And the next image, please. And so step by step, Katie, uh, step by step, we lead them on to be uh, proficient with the camera as a storytelling tool, and then uh, to go out. And then basically, I think in the next picture, if I remember correctly, we can see Sarah with some of our students. Oh, no, this one is, oh, come. this is um, also very interesting. It was so hot, I'm not kidding you, that Sarah had the idea, and it worked. I've never seen this before, to cool the smartphone with a cold bottle of water. I'm not kidding you. This is this is this is real. So here's they're going out into the streets now. They're leaving uh, Alsama, uh, going out and exploring the surroundings. And I think in the next image, Dominic, maybe I can see. Yeah, that. we see it now, Errol. I yes. think this is beautiful to watch, and also you know, combined with life hacks, how to cool down <laughs> a hot cell phone. Thank you so much for that moment, Errol. I guess you need a lot of smartphones. Is that correct for your project? 
is there anything or a possibility how to help maybe because with a used phone just an idea can we send you old phones that you can also use for your project or is this um, not a good idea um, you know what, we, we, this, is, this is one of the things we learned, Sarah, I think you can talk to that also, um, that we discovered, and I, in, in, I'm in no way, I, I, I'm not associated with Apple, uh, but we found, what we found was that the Apple iPhone, sorry to, to mention the name, from generation eight is very, it's a nice tool because of two reasons, the eight, the iPhone eight and up, they ha it has a very good camera. Not only that, but it has AirDrop. It's a functionality where you can share pictures without Wi-Fi. So when we, when we are in the field without power, electrical power, and without Wi-Fi, just with a laptop on batteries and, and a smartphone, it's still possible to share images. So yes, uh, this is one thing that we're looking for the next workshop to uh, get 10 iPhones 8 or up. It, they can be used. Um, uh, or to... pretty new. Maybe there is somebody watching us today who has a few leftovers, a few left left uh, phone so please send them to Errol. Errol, thank you so much for that moment because I do follow up your questions here in our live stream. Thank you so much for all your comments. I quickly uh, look through it, send me your, your questions and of course your comments and I see a lot of emojis. Thank you so much for watching us from all over the world. It is a big pleasure and I think I see a big smile. It just it doesn't make us happy. It also makes Aisha and Mahmoud very happy to have this big audience and of course to dive into the personal stories guys when you were watching the photos when you were seeing the photos from you know cooling down uh, the cell phone going back into the memory line being in the classroom but of course more important being outside of the classroom going outside meeting people taking pictures having these conversations what comes to your mind what made you happy in these times here I'm just all yani بالنسبه للواشط العمل شو يعني خليتكم انتم مبسوطين بشوفكم Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, what make uh, we have us happy because we uh, uh, like we uh, go and see the people and see the refugee camp and uh, we see the, uh, the life the people what the, has the like, uh, life and uh, we made a uh, beautiful story my story uh, and the best player uh, Cricket, Aman, Aman Ibrahim Al Abed, she's a student, a student in a summer center, and uh, she's the best player cricket, and she assistant coach. Uh, Amani, she live a hard life because uh, her family want uh, her uh, married, and uh, she want uh, she didn't live like another girl. Uh, she didn't study, and she didn't. Uh, find uh, her dream because Amani, she didn't have a dream, she didn't have a goal. Uh, right now, Amani, she have a dream, uh, she have a goal, and uh, Amani, uh, phenomenal girl. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for, joy for sharing this beautiful story with us. Aisha, <laughs> when you think back, of course, to our voice, you know, which voice do you want to show to the world? What are your stories about? What do you want to show to the world from your home, from Shatila? Okay, can you translate? Okay, I'm going to talk about what I've said to you. I'm going to talk to you. Okay, uh, hello everyone, I am Aisha. Um, okay, I, I choose uh, the story because uh, the story very uh, re reality and uh, uh, stay in uh, uh, communicate. Okay, uh, the children uh, has a name uh, Adnan. Uh, he uh, he has uh, uh, seven years old. Uh, he work. Uh, he uh, he collect uh, plastic uh, from uh, rips rubbish rubbish. Okay, uh, he collect. Uh, plastic from a bit uh, and uh, he work uh, every day. He work uh, 11 uh, hours every day. Uh, uh, he earns uh, 13 uh, uh, Lebanese, Lebanese lira. 30,000. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 30,000 uh, Lebanese lira per, uh, per day. 
uh, that. Uh... Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Aisha. And yeah. I saw your story, and I was so touched how you told this story about this little boy um, collecting garbage. And of I course, just want to add. So, what thirty thousand lira is? Can I just add yes, that? Yes, What is thirty thousand lira? Is is one dollar and a half. And he earns that, uh, so he, he's the only one who works in his family. So he earns a dollar and a half for 11 hours work every day. We let that sink in. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. To Aisha and Mahmoud, I have one um, final question to both of you. When you look back, of course, telling stories is one thing, but what did you keep from your time? What did you learn that you can use until now from your time? with your fellow colleagues and students, but also with your time, you know, exploring the own neighborhood. What was the most important thing that you learned when you look back and also, of course, when you reflect? Okay. Okay. Uh, what we learned, we learned many things. The first thing uh, we learned how to get a uh, a good picture how is the, the how to control with the, your thing, setting camera and how to uh, find the, find a way to get the picture and how how we want to get the get the story from the picture okay I'll start. okay and Aisha, what did yeah. you learn from the heart you know taking a picture is one thing and learning how to keep or how to take a photo and how to keep your your cell phone properly fixed But what did you learn from a personal perspective? Okay, I, uh, I learned uh, how to uh, how, uh, take a portrait and uh, how to take eyes uh, 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 yes, bird and uh, uh, how to uh, how say a uh, story in a uh, photo. You can also answer in Arabic and Mikey can translate if it's easier for you. So the work as a, as a te teamwork, yes, that's what teamwork. she learned, teamwork, and that's what she took away yes. from it. Wow, Aisha, thank you so much. And Mahmoud, do you want to add on something in Arabic because maybe it's easier to express? What did you learn besides, you know, taking photos, of course? and talking yes. to people? The first thing I learned, uh, work as a team and uh, many things. Uh, Maybe in Arabic, it's easier. If it's easier for you, you know. Uh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. We come back to you after, of course, the exhibition. I'd like to come in with Christoph here. Uh, Christoph Klemann from the Freddy Naumann Foundation the foundation for freedom so when we talk about freedom of communication freedom of speech freedom of expression de christoph um, how are these values connected to the foundation of the freedom uh, of the nauman foundation and of course how you know do you keep track that these values are somehow integrated in projects what how does how do they help um yeah thanks very much katie um yeah i mean we are in our name we have the name freedom um, for the Naumann Foundation for Freedom. Um, so that's in our DNA, the principles of freedom. Um, and of course, the freedom of expression is one of them. Uh, as um, Voltaire once said, uh, you know, I might disagree with, what, with your views, but I will um, kind of defend those views to my life uh, for you to express them. And uh, this is one of the principles that the foundation um, is based on, that our work is based on, and, and, and we do regularly projects related to the uh, freedom of expression. Uh, this is uh, projects like the one we see today. These are also projects on topics like disinformation, which is a big problem around the world, not just in Lebanon, of course. Uh, it's projects also that we do with Sara um, uh, on training journalists, how to read data, how to you know, see what might uh, be disinformation, what is real data. Um, so these are the, you know, freedom of expression is a fundamental core of our work, but just I want to say one thing, and I think this project is not so much related, I mean it is to the freedom of expression, but it's also related to empowerment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, what, what, what Michael said earlier for us at the foundation, 
empowerment of people is so important because we believe that freedom is not just you know the right of being free from coercion or oppression but it's also your freedom to be and you know to 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 live a self self determined life and um, and and that kind of freedom that everyone deserves to to have a life uh, in which they can thrive and they and and, and are self determined I think this is one of the fundamental principles of our foundation and the work that we do worldwide. Thank you so much, Christoph. And it's 6 p.m. here in Berlin on the dot, uh, 7 p.m. here in Beirut. And now it's time for the official opening of our voice, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your comments flowing. I see a lot of emojis and a lot of smiles and hearts and, of course, a lot of questions. And we're going to dive into these questions in 10 minutes. I give you now 10 minutes time and our um, technical department sends you now the link for the virtual exhibition. So you can actually see now this beautiful work from uh, the photojournalist from Our Voice. Follow the link and please stay online. It's gonna be a next tab that you can open. And then you can, you know, mingle around, stroll around in the exhibition and I'll see you then in 10 minutes. Please stay online in the live stream and keep your questions going. Uh, we're gonna collect them in a second. And when you're back in 10 minutes, we're going to ask, of course, the last questions and then we round it up. Have fun. Enjoy it. It's sweet. It's sour. It's bold. It's raw. It's beautiful and very inspiring. Have fun and I'll see you 10 past six or 10 past seven. Uh, nevertheless, 10 past to the full hour now, wherever you are in the world, you're more than welcome. See you soon. Guys, thank you so much. I'm following along. Uh, this is also the beauty about digital events, having several devices. And of course, following along the live stream with all your comments and questions. And uh, there are a lot of other colleagues and students watching us today. So thank you so much for this big and very engaging audience today. Um, wow, I'm very impressed. Guys, Aisha and um, Mahmoud, I have a few questions from the audience going, of course, out to you. Uh, Hiba Isabi is asking, for example, that she is looking forward to see more pictures, of course. She really liked the pictures and she asked if you're planning to conduct a project, um, you know, in different contexts. And of course, to Erol, the question if you are planning to conduct the project in different camps. So maybe we start with uh, Aisha and Mahmoud with the question if you are planning and participating in, in more workshops and of course, also maybe using this newly elaborated skill to use it more professionally. Do you have any plans with what you've learned? Aisha, can we start with you or Mahmoud? Who wants to start? Also, you feel free to answer in Arabic and Mike is translating. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> إذا إذا أنا بدي مثلا شارك طور حالة بالتصوير أوكي yes I want yes I want because I don't have many results okay I don't have okay إنه أنا ما عندي كتير خبرة I don't have uh, lots of experience. Okay. Uh, I want uh, I want learn uh, for, for photo because uh, uh, I want to uh, focus uh, all the children, uh, labor children, uh, and I want to help uh, all the children. Yeah, thank so you so I much, think Aisha. Yes, thank you so much. We did understand you quite well. Mahmoud, how, what's about you? You know, do you plan now with your new skill to go on professionally, or what's your dream? How how is what's the dream? I have many things. I want to learn how uh, to get a film, a uh, uh, cinematic shot, and how to get a raw picture, and how to film raw, and uh, how to edit uh, videos like a professional way. And I want. Uh, uh, learn how to get the picture like black and white and uh, how to uh, portrait and I want to learn many things uh, about landscape, how to get a 
perfect landscape in the way in the camp or any site or any place in the world. Thanks for sharing your dream with us. Sharing dreams makes us all vulnerable, but thank you so much for sharing your dreams with us. Thank you very Dear much. Erol, a question, of course, that I already mentioned from the chat. Are there any plans to broaden a little bit the workshops steam and you know the, the, the program? And of course, go may, may, going maybe into different different camps, that's a question as well. What's, what's on your agenda? What's on your program? What is your plan? As of now, Katie, we're planning, Sarah and myself, it, depending on the, how the COVID situation unfolds, you know, we're planning to come back uh, and to give some more workshops in May of this coming year. Um, but also, and this is a, a bit of, of uh, unofficial news, um, I, uh, Sarah, that even you don't know, I'm talking to some European organizations and there, there might be the possibility to go to some of the places where refugees are in, in on the Greek islands and in Greece right now to do some workshops there. So this is this is definitely in our on, in our focus, um, and 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 then also the you know the long term idea of this uh, of this project is to empower the youth that participate in our workshops to keep sharing uh, and 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 developing stories and and to keep sharing them on our Insta Instagram channel that we just started. Um, so that we have a constant flow of, of images and, and a constant flow of, of photos. And even, this is my fantasy and, and I, I'm, you know, I, I can share it with you. I don't know if it's realistic, but one day I, I'm, I'm dreaming, dreaming of a project where maybe children uh, with, with not a refugee background, but, uh, but uh, normal youth here in, in Europe, in Germany can share with the youth that are in that precarious situation to share their photos to have some kind of we call it pen pal uh, uh, let, let's let's call it a photo pal um, because photography is such a universal language that that maybe even can can be shared uh, uh, beyond language barriers and to have something that's going back and forth but that's just a crazy idea at this point um, but it brings it brings the pen pal system writing letters to a whole new system, right? And the connectivity and the connection within the world. Dear Sarah, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. Where do you see the power of visual storytelling? Because a lot of um, people here are giving thumbs up. You know, I have I see a lot of smiles. I see the comments really cool, very impressive, different views and angles, a super photo. Um, I just read a few out now, guys. That's going out to you, Aisha and Mahmoud. Wonderful yeah, empowerment Katie, project. Um, and yeah, sorry for interrupting you, maybe, but you are uh, opening your YouTube with a voice. We can hear in the background the YouTube uh, YouTube voice, I think, or not you. Uh, that's not me. I think I have it on uh, silent. But the question goes out, maybe, Sarah, you know, when we talk about empowerment, of course, the power of visual storytelling, um, where do you see the potential that is still untouched in such projects on a nutshell? Potential storytelling. Uh, I, I think um, what you are doing and our our work based on telling story from different backgrounds and from different uh, camps in Lebanon. So um, our students now are from camp in Beirut, Shatila camp, but we also went to Akkar camp from on, in north of Lebanon. So uh, for me, storytelling is everywhere. Everyone has a story. And the best thing that we can we can have now, or maybe we can give, is to let them they, let them share their story uh, in a way or another, in one photo, in different type of photo, in multiple photos. And uh, yes, yes, I think like storytelling um, is something we can have a very uh, emotional uh, attachment with the, uh, with others. We can have links and we can have same dreams and same potential in the future. So that's why our project is based on stories to because all of us have have stories and maybe if we can share stories from this camp, another one from other camp will will hear or see the story about this woman or kids or whatever, and they will get empowered and they want to achieve their own dream even in even in these bad circumstances. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, looking a little bit um, to the time, 
we are running out of time again. That's why I'd like to focus now again to Aisha and Mahmoud with my last question, guys. Um, when you look back, you know, talking to strangers in the end, and maybe these strangers becoming your protagonists, and maybe your friends in the end, or maybe somebody that you greet here and there in the camp, creating a, 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 a bigger community. What do you take out of this, this work, you know, being, first of all, a stranger to each other, finding protagonists, and now having a connection through your photo with these persons? I know it's a difficult question, but Michael, you can translate it. Thank you so much, Michael. Ja, du tycker ni måste ha en intima för att ta reda på en nästan inte så vet du avla. Det är inte måste han ha rätt annan i min avla. Man var inte inte ha rätt i alla har det varit allt några. Ja, så du tycker hon så inte hade minu var det man inte så så att i. Ja, ni så inte hade min här är fattar. Ja, ni inte vill hissa ha rätt minu. Ja, ni i så inte hade min här är fattar. So I just want to quickly add, so of course, uh, Mahmoud, uh, of course, knows Amani, because both of them are students here in, in, uh, in Al-Sama. And um, so, so that, of course, is, is not necessarily exactly the same question. Uh, but Aisha didn't know uh, the little boy. She, she found him. How difficult was it for you to approach him and of course to build up a connection or did you learn something from that experience that you're now using as well? Okay. 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 Uh, First one, I can't take any photo uh, for the children because I don't know uh, uh, I don't know uh, what mean is the children, uh, and uh, the children uh, very scared uh, for me. Uh, and uh, the the second, uh, I will try. Uh, I speak uh, with uh, the children. Uh, I uh, I said uh, okay uh, equality uh, equality for uh, for the children because uh, I learn. Uh, the social worker, uh, uh, because, okay, uh, do you want to uh, stay with the, the children? Uh, uh, should uh, sit beside, uh, no, uh, equal, equal uh, the children, because uh, the children are very scared uh, in uh, uh, stand. Okay, uh, and uh, I learn, uh, Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, I learn uh, for the children. Uh, okay. What? Thank you, Aisha. Thank you so much for sharing these bits and pieces. I know it's a long journey and it's so much to process and we have such a big digital audience. It's like a big stage, so I completely understand. I'm also out of work, words because you know I see all these big comments here. I'm seeing, guys, thank you so much. This is such a special event. Aisha and Mahmoud, this goes off to you. You and your colleagues' pictures are amazing. Thank you so much for capturing those scenes and sharing them with us. Keep on taking pictures and telling stories. That's coming straight out from the chat to you, uh, to Beirut. And uh, yes, with these words, I'd like to finish a little bit our, our hour here. Of course, the exhibition will remain open. It's been a lot to discover and it will stay open um, for a couple of more moments. So please use the time. Thank you guys so much. I'd like to thank Mike Zio Vogel. Thank you so much for translating and of course, for being here with us today. To Aisha and Omi and Mahmoud Sleiman, to your work. Thank you so much. A big digital applause. To um, Christoph Klemann and Sarah, of course, Sarah Haitait. Thank you so much for joining. And to Erol Gurian, thank you so much for giving us a little bit more insights. And I think you are also available on all the media platforms uh, in case somebody has more questions or wants to send you know, a package of smartphones or whatever is needed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course, 
All the projects are found online at samaproject.com, ourvoice.media, also what Errol mentioned on Instagram. So please follow them along that their profile will explode with all the followers watching us today in a second. Yes, and thank you so much for watching. This means a lot as we are all scheduled in these times from video call to video call. Time is a very precious gift. So thanks again for joining us wherever you are in the world. All the best to you coming from Berlin where I am, but of course into the world, to Beirut, to London. We had visitors from New York. Thank you so much for watching and all the best for you. Stay healthy. Bye.